perspective. Um, can everyone hear me? Mary Jo, Le Leah, Devin? Are we good to go? Go for it. Okay, not sure I could hear that, but um, I'm, well, hello everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to give this presentation on behalf of the International Year of Rangelands and Pastoralists Support Group. This group includes representatives of organizations and institutions around the world who have strong interest in pastoralist and rangelands issues and who have worked for the five, past five years to gain a UN designation for this international year. I'm gonna focus on three aspects. Some, some of you will have heard this a lot already, but hopefully uh, there'll be a few new things. But I'm gonna look at the history and sort of the background of how the initiative started the current status of the initiative and, and how you can become involved. Okay, why is this not moving? Let me see here. There we go. Devin, are we okay? I saw you come on. Just wanna make sure it, yep. we're good. Okay, if I don't hear you. Looks good. I can see you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> super. Okay, so why an international year? You're all going to know this well, but of course we want to increase wor increase worldwide understanding of the importance of range lessons at pastoralist for all the grand kind of challenges of the day, really to inform decision-making so that we can have more enlightened policies, to mobilize people around the world to address these grand challenges and to boost efforts for creating new knowledge and sharing experiences, and even to uh, dispel misconceptions that people may have about uh, rangelands and pastoralists. So this has been an incredibly long process that none of us recognized when we first started. Um, here you can see an outline of the dates that I'll, I'll kind of just breeze through these, but um, it has been a, an intensive five years for many of us. Um, the first though, going in that, you can see that the uh, International Range Congresses in uh, Mongolia and Argentina, both called on, um, discussed this idea and called on um, the idea of starting an initiative to gain an international year. But for various reasons, those early attempts did not lead to, lead to further action. And it was not until 2015 that this current effort began again in earnest. Drawing on the successful example of the 2015 International Year of Soils, members of the Rangelands Partnership and the Society of Range Management, SRM, began exploring how such an international year could be achieved. In 2016, attention turned to the UN Envir en Environment Assembly in UNEA, where countries were debating how to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. At the meeting, several countries worked on a last minute resolution that ultimately was approved in May of 2016. It didn't call for an international year, but it did call for raising an awareness and conducting a global gap analysis on pastoralist and rangeland issues. So to begin implementing that resolution, a meeting was later held at the 2016 IRC the International Rangeland Congress, and more than 50 representatives from around the world committed to an action plan of next steps. By early 2017, a more formal steering committee had been organized, including a secretariat that established a website, the first website for the International Year that many of you are familiar with on the Global Rangelands uh, website. And this is now our archive website where it has all those preliminary documents and resources that we used and drew on and developed over those years. Between the years 2016 to 2018, the steering committee promoted the international year in multiple fora and members were involved in compiling the UNEP gap analysis. It indicated a lack of understanding of the critical issues in pastoralism and rangelands management and recommended a globally coordinated assessment. 
It also highlighted the lack of balanced integrated approaches to understanding the complex social, economic, environmental, and political facets of rangelands and pastoralism. At the same time, the steering committee was also exploring options for gaining UN approval. By the end of 2018, it became clear that such a proposal would need to first be presented and approved to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and that there were numerous steps in the FAO process. To this end, at the UNEA 4 meeting in March of 2019, a ministerial breakfast event was held that resulted in the commitment of the Minister of Environment from the government of Mongolia to obtain additional support in Mongolia to take the lead on a proposal for gaining an international year from FAO. And in August of 2019, the Mongolian government presented its formal intention to FAO. So here you see an outline of the process for, for gaining that UN approval. In October, as I mentioned, in 2019, the Mongolian government submitted the full proposal to the Committee on Agriculture, which was our first really big hurdle. It has to get through this committee first before and be approved by all the countries, or at least most of the countries that are attending the COAG meeting. And by early 2020, we had letters of support from four other countries, formal le letters of support, and then 29 non-governmental organizations that had been submitted to COAG, including SRM and the Rangelands Partnership. To provide um, ongoing leadership to the process, a national working group was established in Mongolia and the former steering committee became the International Year Support Group. So you can see here that, the, that while we had to go through the COAG process, we had to also gain, there's other parts of the uh, FAO that it has to go through, including the FAO Council that did also approve it. And now we go to the FAO conference in June of 2021 and finally to the UN. And if that's approved, then, it, then FAO will send it on to the UN General Assembly in September of 2021. Prior to the current pandemic, it was expected, um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got COAG support. Um, prior to the pandemic, it was expected that the final proposal and letters of support would be presented in person at COAG for discussion at that October 2020 meeting. And this would involve a side event and virtual and displays at FAO. However, very, it was, it really was maybe two months before, maybe not even that, um, before the meeting was to be held that we heard that it was going to be have to be presented virtually. And we all thought, what are we going to do to, um, to promote this virtually and gain the attention of the, the ambassadors attending the COAG meeting? So what was decided very quickly and within a month's time, we came up with an outreach plan that would be virtual. A key component of that program was the development and launch of the promotional website you see on the slide. And that's where those videos came from that you saw uh, at the outside of this session. This really was a monumental effort. And some of you on the call know this because you were involved in this process. And these were put together in really less than a month. It involved the creation of original documentary videos, as well as collecting videos and photographs from all over the world to represent pastoralist groups and rangelands everywhere. As you see, there are nine regional groupings on the homepage and behind each are videos that we call the voices of pastoralist peoples, as well as more general featured videos. In addition, on each page is a rotating list of logos from the organizations who have supported the effort up till now. At the same time as the launch of the website, a targeted social media campaign was also organized and implemented. This was incredibly important. And these Twitter messages were directed direct to the COAG ambassadors and they received them every day leading for a few days leading up to the meeting and then during the meeting. And this really made a big difference. So now that we've received this support, that we've gotten through the COAG and the council 
and now we're, we're fairly assured that it's going to go through the FAO committee, what do we have to do to prepare for the UN General Assembly in September? So what we're doing now is creating regional support groups. Now these are multi-stakeholders um, and they're volunteers, of course, but the idea is to develop our networks within these regions of more organizations, more country level support to show the, to show the UN General Assembly that how much support there is for this effort. The immediate actions that are happening as these regional groups actually are just starting now and the North American group has had two meetings now and we have uh, selected our chairs as you see here and each of these groups that you see on the in the left hand panel are are in the process of either starting to meet or some of them have are on to their third meeting or so. They've um, selected different representatives to serve on the, the global international support group and they're starting to come up with action plans. Priority actions are to convince governments in their home countries to support the international year with fo a formal letter of support, approaching agencies to um, within the countries to and within the regions to support the effort and really to bring attention to the effort before it gets to the UN General Assembly so that we that everyone knows about it and everyone supports it. That's the goal. Um, obviously, we're going to do this by doing what we're doing right now, reaching out to you at international meetings and um, and asking for you to go out to your networks and help us gain additional support. And then of course, we wanna further populate our, what we call that online booth that you saw uh, with all the videos and, and so forth. And if you, can, if you have social media to help us get the word out that way too. Just so you know who the countries were at COAG that um, supported the, the uh, international year effort, um, these people either provided letters of support, they chatted during the meeting that they approved it, or they actually uh, gave up, came up to the mic and, and uh, gave approval that way. So you can see that the effort started very small with just, I think there were just five countries um, including the Mongolians. And now we have uh, another, a much more outpouring of support. And so we're hoping to build on that as we move to the UN General Assembly. And again, uh, these regional groups are reaching out to non-governmental partners to, um, to combine efforts, to build the networks. And then also we're really, I think that one of the rec recognitions in all of this process is that there's other international initiatives going on that we need to collaborate with, network with, or build on. And these include, of course, from the very beginning, the sustainable development goals, but there's also a UN decade of family farming in process right now, and the UN decade on eco ecosystem restoration that has just begun. And so we're making, we have people reaching out to all these groups as well. So you might want to know what, what we're talking about when we talk about action plans. This is actually an outline of, of potential themes, not, not concrete themes, but potential themes that we might build on through an international year once it is designated. And the, these are, there's an actual document that goes along with this, in it, this uh, 12 monthly themes, and that has gone out to all of the regional groups for their own review and interpretation and, and adaptation to their own needs in their regions. But at least it gives sort of a, a context and, and a focus for all of us to build on as we move towards our international year. So the idea is to not just, so we have three levels of engagement right now. The first to, to do all we can to get that uh, approval at the UN General Assembly in September. The second is that we don't, we're not going to just stop if we get it then because the 2026 20, is a long ways away. So we're planning to do a lot of preliminary outreach 
um, through our regional groups and through the global international support group as the years progress towards the international year. So we have a lot of opportunity for building awareness and gaining additional support. So that's the big overview. I think, I hope that it made some sense. And I want you to know who the International Year Support Group uh, contacts are. Jim O'Rourke and Miriam Neomir Fuller have been huge um, proponents of this and, and keep uh, this effort moving forward. We now have a communications team. And within this communications team, we also have members of each of the regional groups that are uh, different members that have signed on to be a part of this communications team. And then of course, we have our two websites, the archives website that I told you about earlier, and then the online booth that you saw um, as from the videos. And I want you to point your attention to the North American um, component of that international year booth because we have uh, some really lovely videos that a lot of you contributed. We have um, a number from Mexico, interviews with ranchers, um, people from our different organizations. And there's a lovely one that starts, that's the very beginning. And then if we have time, maybe we can show it that um, SRM uh, don't put forward and put together in just a few days so that it would be available to, for everybody to see at COAG. So I'll stop my share and turn this back to Devin. And Great, any thanks Barb. Questions we uh, might have. I appreciate that overview of, of the, uh, the process. I think a lot of people aren't necessarily, uh, well, first of all, aware that this effort is um, being undertaken and how involved SRM people are and how much work has gone into it for so long. Um, so, Barb, you might have access to the question and answer panel. We have one uh, a question just popped up here asking, how flexible is the outline of your action plan and when does it get solidified in the process? So that is the, it, the each regional group is in, um, has been tasked with creating an action plan for their region. And so the North American group is just starting to work on theirs. The 12 month theme is really more oriented toward uh, when we actually have the international year, but the action plan, which, is, which covers those three components, the really, what are we going to do right now this year before September 2021. In fact, it has to be before, quite a bit before. I think we have to really have, uh, if we're going to get additional letters of support from uh, different organizations within our regions, we need to get those to the UN and to our contacts in Mongolia, probably by the end of July. And so that's gonna be uh, getting that, uh, you know, as, as much support and as broad-based support as we can get through this, through the next few months is the really the key first task for all of the action groups, but how they go about that and who they, who are they targeting to gain that support is very much a regional approach. And then after that, the action groups with the, the action plans will be formed on what's going to happen for the well, we're assuming we're going to get this. <laughs> so well, let's just be very positive about that, that it's going to get approved. Uh, we have a lot of support, but we want to keep building it. And then we want to start working on these outreach pro and programming um, that will really uh, build up to the international year. And this might even include exhibits. We're talking with some uh, groups in uh, Germany and potentially the Smithsonian about some kind of a traveling exhibit. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can be done. And it's really up to our the creativity of all the people and volunteers who are part of that process. So I, I meant to say right at the outset, any of you that are interested in joining the North American support group or any of the, re if you work regionally and have another, there are some people in this States that are working more in West Africa. And so they're in, they're joining the West African group. So it's very flexible. It's really wherever you want to put your time and energy and have interest. So I hope I answered that question. 
Great, thanks, Barb. Well, we haven't uh, had another question pop up, so maybe we can go right now to that video that Karen submitted for the SRM on the international year. That'd be great. Do you have that? Do that just now. Oh, great, super. Yeah, it's really nice. I, they did a great job. And we'd love to have more videos, by the way, uh, and just short, brief, they can be pretty informal. This is the one, correct, Barb? This, uh, yes, yes it can, is. Okay, then we'll go with that. But you'll have to share your the sound again, I think. Rangelands oh, dominate the working landscapes of North America. They come to life in the prairies which stretch from the parklands of Canada, across the Great Plains, to the coastal prairies around the Gulf of Mexico. Rangelands are also revealed in the sagebrush steppe of the Great Basin and in pinyon juniper woodlands and oak savannas. Shrubs and cacti characterize rangelands of the southern United States, extending deep into Mexico. The benefits of rangelands are many. They supply forage for livestock, providing food and economic stability for rural communities. Rangelands are also important habitat for wildlife like elk and deer, plus migratory songbirds and waterfowl, and they house vital pollinators for healthy ecosystems. These landscapes also harbor rich soil communities and supply clean water and air. The sun and wind which characterizes rangelands can be harvested as sustainable energy. And these landscapes also provide abundant recreational opportunities and magnificent vistas. Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Hart, 2020 president of the Society for Range Management. The Society for Range Management is the professional scientific society and conservation organization whose members are concerned with studying, conserving, managing, and sustaining the varied resources of the rangelands which comprise nearly half the land in the world. Established in 1948, SRM has hosted over 4,000 members in 48 countries, including many developing nations. SRM's members are land managers, scientists, educators, students, producers, and conservationists. A diverse membership guided by a professional code of ethics and unified by a strong land ethic. Our mission is to provide leadership for the stewardship of rangelands based on sound ecological principles. The Society for Range Management strongly supports the efforts to name an international year of rangeland and pastoralists. We believe greater recognition is needed for the extremely important but often overlooked land called rangeland. We urge others to show support and vote in favor of this initiative. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's particularly notable that how quickly they, uh, how they <laughs> cranked that out over over the year. It looks like we're getting a, a couple more questions uh, in the chat here. Uh, someone's wondering if Barb, uh, if you could clarify the how part of getting involved, and um, maybe is is there a way to know who all is already involved? Um, gosh, yeah. Uh there is. I mean, and first of all, you can always contact me. But um, as you notice there, we have, if you're interested in the North American support group and joining that effort, um, all you have to do is contact Barry Irving or Lane Kopak or, or myself um, and just say, I'm, I want to be added to the mailing list. And then you can be as much or as little involved, but at least you'll, you'll know what's going on. I should say that if um, I wasn't a bit behind, I was traveling last week, so I uh, am a bit behind because I, I'm supposed to be posting the minutes from the, um, no, I might share, I wonder if I could share the North American section. Uh, uh, if you go to that IYRP.info website, there's a North American section. If you go to that, there's not only the videos are there, but there's a link to resources. And you will find by tomorrow, I will get up the, the minutes from the first meeting of the North American uh, re regional support group. And then if you if you're a little bit 
concerned about whether this fits with what you want to be working on, at least you can look at what we covered in the minutes and the second uh, group set of minutes will go up in another couple of weeks. Anyway, you can keep informed by um, keeping up with that on the website and, and looking at the resource uh, uh, minutes and documents that we have there, or you can just contact us. And again, um, I could I can show that again those email. Well, let me put it in the let me put it in chat. My my email address here. That's better, faster, I think. But there's lots of ways to be involved, and there's lots of people who are already involved. And some of them are, I think, on, a lot of them are on this call. Um, I, I already mentioned uh, Jim O'Rourke and Miriam Niemer Fuller. Um, I think Maria Fernandez Jimenez is on. Um, my Arizona team, uh, who are all fantastic, Jeannie Fander, Sheila Merrigan, um, Amber Dalkey, uh, Sarah Nelly, um, George Rule, all of these people have contributed and made this uh, happen. But there's there's lots of people who are who have been great support, and we would love to have more. So feel please do join us. I see there's some Q and A's, Devin. Should I? Yeah, I've uh, added some text responses to one of those. We have someone asking about rangelands in the Arctic and Alpine. Um, There's a lot of folks would, would include those and they want to make sure they get involved or that, you know, they're part of the scope. You can see that there is a caribou uh, or a reindeer. I'm not exactly sure. can't hear its feet click. Isn't that the difference? Uh, no. they're, 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 um, in the logo and it's uh, I've put a link in here for on the IR, IYRP page, the Arctic uh, ecosystems are included in the European division. And so that I also includes a lot of Alpine ecosystems in terms of transhumanists and all that. I want to say that the Arctic group, I think, is going to break off from Europe and become its own. So those of you who are interested in reindeer and the Arctic region, um, I can put you in touch with, um, I'm not sure that they've actually designated their chair yet, but we have a couple of people who are our contacts, but I believe they feel that they're enough different from uh, shepherding and herding and, and uh, range and pastoralist issues in Europe that the Northern group is going to have their own uh, regional support group, so. I'm gonna put oh. you on the, on the spot with some, uh <laughs> with some trivia, Barb. Do you know what the what the root of Alp and Alpine is? I do not. It means summer pasture. The Alps are by definition summer pasture and Alpine. So when you think of the European transhumanists of, of moving cattle up uh, the mountains for the summer grazing and then back down for the winter, that's uh, based in the, the whole definition and you know the term for that whole ecosystem. I really like that they idea. Are rangelands. And yeah, uh, the idea of, of having these little trivias um, that are so, the did you knows, I think we haven't done enough with that. And that's something we're talking about, trying to build into our outreach programming, things that grab people's attention, but also teach us something. And there's so mm -hmm. much for all of us, well, certainly for me to learn. Did we have, I think, let me, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing the. Yeah, so they're asking, um, about the Canadian Arctic, and that might be part of the justification for your, uh, you know, for why they want to break off because I don't know exactly what the proportions are, but a sizable part. Of I don't Arctic. know if can Barry, can you speak to that point? I think Barry's on, and I don't know if we should sort of um, turn that over to our Arctic group that's that really is being out of the Scandinavian countries, whether they're going to include Siberia and I don't know how that's going to work but they but this is exactly what's happening as these regional groups are forming and then they're having these discussions well do we belong together or do we need to separate and until that really becomes clear we probably will eventually change some of the design the regional designations on the iyrp.info website so we may end up with you know, 15 different regions, but right now there's nine there and already we're breaking into smaller region, regional units. 
but um, but that's it's really based on the discussions that are happening in those regional groups. All right. Well, um, I think we're kind of getting down towards the end of our time. We've had a request for uh, the web link for the various working groups. People want to join in there, and we're going to have to close this so that we can get the plenary set up. We got the hook coming off the stage from the SRM people in the chat. So hopefully we can keep things going in the app. If you're on your phone um, and online, we can keep the uh, conversation going in the sidebar. And I hope you stop by tomorrow. We're gonna have Barb again, and we're going to talk about Chihuahuan grasslands and uh, conservation oriented ranching. So thanks a lot, Barb, for jumping in here in two days in a row. And thank you everyone else for your participation. Enjoy the plenary. Thank you. Bye-bye everybody.